Well, Shabbat Shalom, brethren. Welcome to all the Goy, the Goyim, all those searching and seeking Yah. Seek Him first. Seek Him in all His wisdom and all His knowledge and His understanding. Lean out unto our own understanding. And today, we're going to look deeper into the Word and see the mysteries of Scripture revealed to us through His very words. Something you've read a dozen times and might have missed. The beauty and the wonders of Yah, our Heavenly Father, and His Son, Yahushua, or Yahushua, the Word and what it reveals to us. So, if you wouldn't mind joining me, let's go into uh, Yohanan. Yohanan is uh, what we renamed John. And let's go into 14. We're going to take a look. So let's go ahead and get this up on the screen. Okay. So let's read this together, guys. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in Elohim. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many staying places. Now yours might say mansions. It might say rooms. And you may have mansion or house but it is in my father's house are many staying places or rooms and if not i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i shall come again and receive you to myself that where i am you might be too hallelujah and where i go you know and the way you know so let's start digging into this right away. Okay, first of all, we know let not your heart be troubled is, is let, don't let your heart tremble with fear is what this is saying. In other words, have no fear. Perfect love, his perfect love casts out all fear. So we can start right off there. But let's get into the word we say believe. And we'll look at it in Greek and in new. Some of it's uh, a Greek or Hebrew equivalents. So right over here, it says, let not your heart be troubled, believe in Elohim. And if you look up this, it is the supreme magistrate or the father. Okay, so it is, he is delineating between himself and his father who is greater than him. His words. So the word believe comes from G4100, and that is pisteo. Pisteo is, is the equivalent and that is to believe. The equivalent to that in the Hebrew is H539, Aman, this is just one equivalent, by the way. Aman is uh, to build up or support, to foster a parent, to render, be firm or faithful, to trust or believe, to be permanent or quiet, to be true or certain, or to go to the right hand, isn't that fantastic? He's telling us that belief is being built up and supported in what? The Word. And it is fostering as a parent or a nurse. It's something, our belief is something that we foster, not only to ourselves through His Word, but that He fosters to us or nurses us with His Word. He builds us up. So, and it is to render, to render yourself to something is to submit yourself and be firm and faithful. So when we render or submit ourselves to his word and we become firm and faithful, the more that we are rendered or stirred up in his word, the more we are, it is blended, it is, it is within us. We become firm and faithful, just like dough. The more you work it, the firmer you, it becomes over time. You work it to a point where you break it down, it builds back up. To trust or believe, to be permanent or quiet, be still and know. So it's a permanence. Once his word is really within us, it, it, it can't be taken out. Well, it's only those who, in the, uh, the parable of the uh, seed, the sower and the seed, when it talks about those that the 
They had the, some form of the word in them, and immediately the wicked one comes and takes it away. We're not those people, right? We don't want to be those people. So to be true or certain, and of course, the most beautiful thing ever, to go to the right hand. Who is the right hand of his father? Yahushua, the Messiah. His anointed, his son, the Aleph and the Tall. That is his right hand. He says, I am the Aleph and the Tall. So that is the first and the last. Pisteo is also H8085, which means Shema. Shema here, if you're not familiar with it, is to hear intelligently. The implication is, you, you know the Shema in uh, Devarim or Deuteronomy. Well, it talks about the Shema here. Six and four is where you would see that. So let's go and say it is to hear intelligently. Implication of paying attention for obedience and doing. Shema is to hear, listen, and do. It's like hear it, but pay attention to what's being said here and do. But also part of Shema is to tell. So part of the Shema is not keeping your light under a bushel or a basket, but it is let your light so shine that all men are drawn to Yah. So by our hearing, listening, paying attention, and doing, the last part of Shema is to tell. Is to tell everyone about this. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing, telling everyone about his word? Not telling everybody of what we think when a day starts or what skin color people had or any of this other gibberish that's going on out there that only divides the body. We're to be built up in the body. We're to build up the body with our words, and with our actions. So in the Shema of hearing what he's telling us in his word. So also in, now in, and then this is the word we're looking at, in is kai. Now kai also appears in the Greek, and this is G2532 in the very beginning of scripture where it says, in the beginning created Aleph Ta. Now it says Bereshit bara Elohim Aleph Ta in the Hebrew, which translates to in the beginning created Elohim Aleph Ta. So the Aleph Ta is the Kai in the Greek. So it means and, often not expressed or being redundant. It's uh, explicitly understood. Also, even and both. So this is always an indication of the Father and the Son working in tandem. The Son is taking his directions, his instructions, his words, and his teachings. Everything he has, he says, is not of me, but of my Father. How can a Son do less he sees his Father? So he's letting us know right from the very beginning, the father and the son were side by side in this whole thing. So, and then we see in the Hebrew, and this, again, I didn't give you all of the Hebrew words that uh, apply to this understanding because there's so many in all of this, but I want to narrow it down to a few to bring it forth, to give you a much broader understanding of what that verse, just this, just four verses, and I'm telling you, I could have made this a three-hour video just on these four verses because I broke down every word. And it was like, wow, I can't even put it all here. This is so wonderful. So in H853, of course, is Aleph Tal or Eth. And that's pronounced Eth to some people, but it's Eth, which means self. Used to point out the object of a verb or more definitely or even or namely. Okay. So... He is pointing out himself. So we have here in the Hebrew, implicitly understood, Yosef and Mary went into Yushalayim, also, also, but also. So here we have, he is, this is pointing out, so if you stay in me, in myself, in, in, in this, in self, is self, even or namely. Now in H854, is more often the, the case, is eighth again, it's still his nearness. So it is drawing near to him, staying in him and drawing near to him, 
together with, by, at, and among. He says, no one enters into the Father. No one gets to the Father but by me. In other words, we have to be in him and near him at all times. It is, it is through him that all these things happen. It has always been through him that all these things happen. So the next one he tells us, he says, in my father's house. Now, house is G3614, and it's Okia, and it is properly a residence, or usually are completely an abode, but it's also a family. So we see the Hebrew equivalent, one of them, is Beth. Now, Beth is H1004, and it's house, the greatest variation of applications, especially family. Again, it is not just talking about where you reside or a place that you, that you lodge. It is talking about being in a family. He's bringing you into a family. He's bringing you into an inheritance as heirs, as children, as part of his family. And this is trying to tell us this. And here he says, and there are many staying places. Staying places is Moni. Okay, so that's G3438, Moni, a staying, a staying, not just a residence, but a staying. In other words, we reside, we, we stay in him. If you stay in me, and I in you, and I in the Father, then the Father is in us through him. So he is saying here, a staying or a residence, or the act of or the place. So the act of staying in something, tarrying, remaining in something here, he's giving us a much deeper understanding that he is telling us is it also an action. Remember, Hebrew is action. It's a verb. It's always a verb. All of Hebrew is an act of doing. There is an action involved always. And it says by implication, the permanent indwelling of the Father in us through the Ruach HaKadosh. Hallelujah. So he is giving us a, a wonderful insight here, guys. He is telling us that he, there are many places. There is a, 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 a staying, many that are staying in him. The, and, and by this, we have the indwelling of the Ruach. So he's going to prepare this place for us, is it not? And it says, and if not, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. Now, you would think that the same place and place would be the same, but it's not because he's trying to convey a much deeper message to us. And then this is G5117, and that's topos. And that's a spot, a location, as a position, a home, a track, etc., a condition or an opportunity. And he's creating the condition and the opportunity for us to stay in the Father, to be in Him, is how we get to the Father, to be a resident of the Malkut Yahuwah, the reign or the kingdom of Yahuwah. He is preparing not only a way and a path for us, but He is the condition under which, so He is securing a position with the Father through Him. And He is setting up the opportunity for us. We didn't have an opportunity, but he prepared and made a way through his impalement for our behalf because sin separated us utterly and cast us out into darkness and eventually unto the fire where we were burnt up and no more. So he is creating the condition and the opportunity. He ever lives to intercede on our behalf. Hallelujah. It also means a scabbard. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, that's talking about the sheath in which you put a sword or a knife, but it's more by the implication of what it's for. It's something that is held tightly and secured. When we are in him, when he has created the opportunity and the condition in which we can be in the spot where he and the Father reside, he is securing us. He is holding us tightly. Those that the Father has placed in his hand, no one can jump out of the Father's hand. This is when this is telling us in that place, when we make it, when we hold tight and hold fast to his word, and we get where he is, he's telling us we are secured like a sword or a, or a knife in a sheath. We are held tightly, and we are secure in that place because of the condition that he has made, the opportunity that he has given to us through his word and through his Mashiach, through Yahushua Mashiach and Yahushua. He's telling us something fantastic here. It is also H1004, the house 
for the family. He's securing us a spot in his family to be heirs. It's also H3027 Yod. Now, mind you, this had like 20 uh, related words and they all fit. So that's what I'm saying. You have to study this word out. You have to study out all the Hebrew. And, th and this is just using a concordance. This isn't even getting into the dictionary, which would have made this uh, profoundly long. Um, but Yod, Yod is a hand in, in, in indicating power or the means or the direction, the means, the open one. He has opened his hand to us. His hand was closed to us. He's opened his hand. He's created the opportunity and the condition that we might be in his hand, placed within his hand. And he will hold us tightly and he will secure us. This is so fantastic. Another one is H5159, and that's Nahala. Nahala is something inherited, an occupancy or an heirloom, something precious. So he is affording us the opportunity of an inheritance, of an occupancy in a family, a place or a position in his family that is more precious than gold. Up here it says, in a state or a portion, we have a portion in him through Yahushua Mashiach, through what he has done. And it goes on to say for you, and if I go to prepare a place, and if I, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I shall come again and receive you to myself that where I am, you might be too. And where I go, you know the way. You know. And the way you know, he's telling us. And you know, and the way you know. The way is G3598, and it's Hodos. Hodos is a road, the narrow road. By implication, it's a progress or, or the route or act or distance. So we have to hold on tight to the end. All of his word is implicating all of the rest of his word. It's cohesive. It's coherent. It makes sense, but you have to dig these things out. You have to go look at them to understand that this four verses are summarizing so much. That it's not directly saying it, but it would be understood in Hebrew. That's the problem. In our language, it just seems to be part of a, a, a greater thing. But it's telling you within it, it has a picture of the picture. It's a picture in a picture. It's a PIP. Isn't that fantastic? Long before we ever had this technology, we already had Hebrew, which was a PIP, a picture in a picture. So he's telling us it's a progress or the root or act or distance. It, again, an action. We're on the narrow path. It is a mode or a means by which we get there. Who is the way? Yush is the way. Did he not say, I am the way, the truth, and the life? Does it not say that also in Psalms that the Torah, who is the Torah, the, the word that was made flesh, the Torah made flesh, who is with the Father in the beginning, the Aleph and the Tal, the, the first and the last letter in the Aleph base? It's fantastic. It is also in Hebrew, H 1870, the Derek, which is, a go, again, a road. Now, this is a trodden road. Now, a trodden road means a path that has been beaten out for you. In other words, he paved the way. He came down here, and he took your death, which is the wage of sin. Our sin demanded our death. That's what he did. Is he took away the demand for our death and then paved a way. You don't pave a way if you're already at the end of the road. If, you're already, if you've already arrived, then there is no road. If when I get to my house and I walk in the door, I'm no longer on the road to my house. I'm in my house. He's telling you I've paved the way. I've made the way. I've beaten, I've trotted it down. It had to be cleared that you might come to where I am. And he's telling us that. And it says, here, the second part of it is a course of life or a mode of action, often an adverb, a course of life or a mode, the way that you should go, the path in which you should walk, the old paths that we need to walk in. And also in this, and there's a few, it says 4725, that's H4725, and that's Makom. Makom is a standing, i.e. a spot. 
used widely in a, in a locality, as in a general or a specific, or of a condition in body and mind. He's made a way. He's made a standing in a spot. He's beaten the path to what? A locality, a place. And created the condition where he said that also up here in Topo is a condition or an opportunity for us to come. He's created that. In my bowl, in age 3996, you see here, he's created an entrance. It's a place or an action. Again, he's created a place or an action in which we have entrance in to him and the Father. It is the, we enter the Father through him. As we abide in him and he in us, and he is in the Father and the Father is in him, we then all become a had. We become united in purpose. We become one. We become one in that way and he's created that by his actions for our behalf the last part is you know now you know no is uh ido ido is g1492 and it is properly to see but not limited to the eyes an understanding in other words it's telling us that you see you understand something you don't have to actually physically see it but he's saying there's an understanding. So what are we seeing? What do we know? The way you know. We know him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So he's saying, you know this because I've shown it to you. I've trodden down the path. You've seen the things that I do. And by implication in the perfect tense is to personally know, to have seen or experienced something by firsthand observation. And he's talking to people there that walked with him. So we see here. Is most certainly telling them, you know the way. I've shown you. I've beaten out the path. This isn't hard to do. It's not impossible for any of us. By extension, it is to personally know how to do it. So anyone who says only one can walk perfectly is, is, is wrong. As we are in him, we are walking perfectly. But we have to remain in him. Perfection is not done by him, only by him, and not by us. It is by us as we reside in him. He has trodden out the path. He has made a condition or a spot. He has given us entrance into an inheritance, a wonderful, fantastic inheritance. And in this, it also says it is to see how it is done. So he's telling us, I came and showed you how it's done. So it's not that we can't do it. He's saying, you can do it. I've shown you, and you've personally seen it. And as we reside in him and we abide in him, we have personally seen the way, and we know how to do it. It's not hard for us. The last one is H3045, and that's Yada. Yada is to ascertain by seeing, to know, to observe, care, or recognize. So we see the, the path laid out before us, brothers and sisters. We see it. We know it. So don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be trembling in fear. But have belief to build up the support, the firm and faithful action. Belief is an action. Be quiet in your knowing. And go to the right hand of the Father. As the next statement, he says, believe also in me. Also in me. Who is in me? In Aleph Tal. That's what in is, Kai. In me. Aleph Tal. Believe. Have the action, the firm belief. Go to the right hand. Render yourself unto him. Be firm and be faithful. In my father's house. My father's house. Resident about his family. My father's family. There's a place for you. You have an inheritance in my father's house. Where I am, you may go also, is a is a place. He's given us a place. He's given set the condition. He's made a way. He's done it for us. So we just have to walk in him. And if you and he says, and if I go, I prepare it for you. I'm preparing the condition the circumstances in which this can happen. I'm the one who ever lives to intercede on your behalf. I'm the one who did this because the Father loved you so much that he put this to me. He gave me the option to do this, and I chose because I loved you so much. 
in Proverbs 8 and 22, it talks about how he was there in the beginning. At the very end of that, he says, and I delighted daily in men, and the Father delighted in me. The Father delighted in him as he delighted in us. I'm so proud to see his wonderful son who was willing to take this burden upon himself and give us his burden and his yoke. And I will come again and receive you to myself. We will be in him. That in him, as we remain, as we tarry, as we walk the way, the direct, the path, the way he walked, and we abide in him, we can go where, the, where he goes. In this new Shamayim or heaven and the new Erez or earth, the new heaven and earth, and to be in the reign of the Malkut Yahuwah, the reign of Elohim, the reign of our Most High. When his reign comes, he has created the condition, the place. He has given us a position with him. He has, come, he has done it. And that way we walk in the way that we know. We know the way, the direct the path. We know what we must do. And we can do it. We can do it because we've seen it. We've ascertained it. We've observed it. And he's done it for us. He's trodden it out. We don't have to forge a new path. There is no need for a new path, brothers and sisters. There is no need for us to trodden out our own path, our own way. He's done it for us. Hallelujah. So let us today remember, as you dig out these words, go through. That was just a concordance. To go through all the various words and all the various things that those words mean. And look how much four verses can give you. He has summarized the entire thing in four verses. I did this for you. The Father loved you so much he sent me. And I loved you so much I did it. And in me you're going to find the way. In me you'll know the path. In me you'll have a, I will set forth the conditions under which you'll have a position in the family with my Father and myself. You have an inheritance. It's more precious than heirloom, more precious than gold. It is in him. Love all of him with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And love your neighbor, your brother, as you do yourself. Have kindness and compassion on your enemies. Think about his word day and night. As you walk by the way. As you go to bed. When you rise up. There's no point in any time that his word shouldn't be in our minds and our lips. Well, brethren, like, subscribe, and share. But mostly share. Share his wonderful, wonderful word with everyone you meet, everywhere you go, every chance you get. And if there isn't a chance, make a way. Make a path. He's already beaten it out for you. He's already walked it. He's already trodden down. So he plowed the path. Let's walk in the path he's given us. Hallelujah. We love you.